Hello, this is Greg Valoria, aka Social Greg on Twitter. This is the Nerd Stalker Tech Week Podcast number 45. Happy New Year, and you are? I am Adolfo Saranda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening and watching. Great show. Hey. Come up. I say that all the time. Great show. Oh, oh always, always. He, he is a great show. He is the greatest show on earth. <laughs> so, anyway, that was fun. Uh, our best of 2012 was, 2012 was fun. So, that was, oh, yeah. that was a good show, man. That's great. With uh, Emma Lamb Appreciate and uh, Social Media Sean. Way to go, you guys. Yeah. yeah In fun. Vancouver Island, British Columbia, yes. as they say. Yes. So, anyway. Man, I can't wait for this first show. So let's start, man. I, I, I'm looking at your first thing. Uh, Samsung reportedly launching Tizen-based phones on <laughs> NTT Docomo in 2013. I love to say I told you so, and I love to say Tizen. So you're going to hear that a lot this year, people. Me saying Tizen yes. over and over again. Can you see Tizen? Yeah, so thanks to uh, Sarah, Sarah Surly of Engadget for this story. Uh, according to Japan, mm. uh, Japan's daily Yomi, Yomi, Yuri. Yomi, Yuri. Thank you, sir. Uh, NTT Docomo <laughs> is partnering with Samsung to develop phones running the open source Tizen operating system with the first handsets wow. reaching the market next year. Uh, according to the, what is it? Yom, Yomi. Yomuri. Yomuri. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Other mobile carriers are also getting behind the development of Tizen because they fear the hegemony of Apple and Google. Uh, they, you know, we've heard about Tizen as far back as September of 2011. Me and Greg were talking about yeah. this quite some we time We were talking ago. about that, um, yeah, last year. The, that Linux-based and uh, Intel-backed software came about when Nokia's Migos operating system bit the dust. And uh, we've exactly. already seen evidence of a Tizen-based Galaxy S3. So, um, yeah, like like we love to say, me and Greg have been talking about this one for a long time, and uh, we were sort of debating about it a bit, you know, and people were, like, asking, you're crazy. You know, no one's going to compete with Android and, and iOS, and, and why would this, you know, Samsung ever not go with an, an Android solution? And, whew, Look at here. Look what we got. Yeah. And there's even rumors of them working on a Microsoft uh, phone from what I hear. But I think Tizen Microsoft. will be a, a huge um, endeavor for Samsung here uh, coming soon because it would be their solution end to end. Let's talk yes. Avis. What's the deal? Big news. This was huge. <laughs> they try harder, Big number. don't they? Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, well, as you know, earlier this week, Avis Budget uh, Group, uh, known for its car rental services, moved into the the car sharing business by acquiring Zipcar for over 500 million big ones, my wow. friends. Wow. 500 million big ones. So that deal was announced, and uh, you know, I, I didn't realize. I, I completely forgot that Zipcar. I always think of Zipcar as a small startup, but you know, they're actually a public company. I, I, I oh, completely really? forgot wow, about that. Too, yeah. Man. Yeah, so, um, you know, um, I, what can you say? Yeah, you know, are you a Zipcar user? Now, I've done it a couple times for yeah. business, yeah. Okay. I've never yeah, done so, so, you know, we're downtown San Francisco, so trying to drive my car down there and then get a parking space for $20 for the whole day, and then, you know, um, you know, I, Zipcar kind of opened up this car sharing thing, but it isn't really car sharing, right? It's really, I'd, I would... Mm -hmm. Label yeah. it as optimized car rentals, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Car sharing is more like uh, Lyft and uh, re relay rides and all that stuff sure. like that, right? Sure. That, right. But but you know these guys are the ones that really are, are known to kind of start that movement or people thinking that way, right? So, um, yeah, I, I, you know it validates car sharing. Um, it, it was a great move uh, considering that uh, their other competitors bought up the number four. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, you know, it, it hurts. It had went ahead and, and bought up, uh, I believe, a uh, dollar, dollar. So, um, wow. so I think dollar thrifty. So I think, you know, they wanted to make a move, but this was a great move by Avis. Now, you know, the worry for everyone is going to be, you know, are they going to take this uh, pseudo startup and, and ruin it because there's this big monolith? And, right, or uh, just shut it down, right? Oh yeah, or <laughs> shut yeah. it down. But yeah. you know, the, the you know the CEO was pretty candid. He said that uh, in a couple of interviews that I read on on the net that you know he's going to leave it alone, and uh, uh, we'll see. I, you know, the ones that could benefit are Zipcar users because they're going to get many more options. Um, I even read some crazy thing that like you know with with the great network that Avis uh, Budget has, 
of cars, they could, you know, funnel some of that off to put more locations in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Zipcar is really a weekend business if you think about it. More it's, so it's than it's a subscription uh, too, right? I mean, you have to be yeah, like a monthly. Yeah. It's monthly, so it's very different than Avis then, because Avis yeah. seems to be, you know, you go to an airport really primarily. Let's face it, and you yeah. uh, rent a vehicle for a series of days, typically two, probably minimum, yeah. maybe one. Um, it, whereas it seems right. like Zipcar is very short form typically for the urban dweller, right, who doesn't have a vehicle, yeah. who needs to get to the grocery store or get a van to move even or to go to Ikea to pick up some big piece of right. furniture or something like that. Right, right. I, I mean, I, I thought it uh, I thought it was a great move on Avis's part in terms of just expanding their network. You know, I think, remember, Hertz opened up years ago those uh, locals, right, the local rental places, right, where, you know, you had maybe six or seven cars in the lot, huh. and, okay. you know, if you wanted a local to do that. But, you know, it's, it's nowhere close to what Zipcar is, right, right in terms of um, having the ability to pick up a car and drop it off. Now, the, the idea here was also uh, why Zipcar um, – uh, customers would benefit from this is that if they could expand their network and put multiple locations, it means dropping off at the same location is not a big deal anymore. You know, if you have enough of them around, you just drop it off at the nearest one and and you're done. Hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. so there's there's some interesting things that could be played out with this thing. So, yeah. uh, you know, let's let's see how this plays out. They, I mean, we still they still have to you know because this is. Uh, uh, this is under scrutiny, you know, from the Securities Exchange Commission. So they're going to have to really look odd. at this whole deal. You know, that's. I think this is an yeah. odd thing to to be under scrutiny, um, where we have like large larger companies like Google, you know, for instance, who like got away supposedly. Absolutely. So anyway, let's go on to your next one. Um, I, you're the phone man in this show. It looks like uh, the first Ubuntu phone yeah, OS uh, yeah. download for Galaxy Nexus yeah, <laughs> available soon, like February. Yeah, yeah. So thank you to Android and me's uh, Dustin Early. Uh, so at a press event held in London last week, Canonical unveiled the next big thing for the Linux-based Ubuntu, uh, a smartphone operating system uh, demoed uh, on a Samsung Galaxy Nexus. The operating system wasn't complete. Complete, but early hands-on reports were positive. Today, it's been uh, announced uh, uh, that the first installable download of Ubuntu Phone OS is going to be released uh, in February. Uh, it still won't be feature complete, but in just over a month from now, Galaxy Nexus owners with a mind for tinkering will be able to experience their first encounter with Ubuntu phones, Ubuntu for phones. Uh, it's not said if the first release will include the Ubuntu, the Ubuntu App Store, or voice actions missing during the unveiling of the platform, uh, but you can be sure the essentials, dialing, and messages will be fully functional. Now, The Verge had a really cool um, video demo of, of this in action at CES, and it really does. It looks quite nice, quite nice. Um, there were some delays in, in, uh, in interaction and things like that to be ex- mm. expected, just like the first versions of Windows operating system that I saw. Um, sure. you know, in the beginning, very similar. Uh, I really like, uh, the interaction. It's a very sort of, um, like you'll, you just have to see it. You know, it's, re- it looks really nice. I'll, I'll put up some photos here for you guys to see. And, um, yeah, it, it's nice to see choice, you know, and on these phone operating systems, uh, besides just Android or iOS for that matter, yeah. know, especially from yeah, op- I, I think... open source, uh, selections, you know, it's <clears throat> very excited. I can't wait to see, uh, more of uh, actually Mozilla's uh, solutions too. Oh right, so, right, 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 right. Wow. Ability. Okay, cool. So Good Greg, choice, man, tell Good me choice. about these Yelp. What judge Yelp? Uh, <coughs> oh. cri- criticisms. <laughs> I'll know, take I, you to court. I catch it. I you give me one star. Weird things on there. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I catch some of these weird things. It's like that the, the guy in France that was being caught on the Google Google Earth or whatever. But anyway. <laughs> This isn't exactly like that, but anyway, um, thanks to All Things D and Liz Gaines uh, for this. Uh, so uh, a Virginia court uh, a few weeks ago uh, lifted an injunction against a woman who left negative reviews about her home contractor on Yelp and Angie's List. So the story is that the contractor sued a woman who posted unfavorable reviews on his service on Yelp and Angie's List, right. uh, alleging def- defamation of a number of uh, respects and sought up an injunction. So the trial judge uh, held a held up the preliminary injunction and said, uh, "Hey, hey uh, ma'am, uh, can you uh, 
uh, redo, revise your statements until uh, we could figure out what's going on. Yeah, it was, it was the craziest wow. thing, right? So enter the uh, American Civil Liberties Union, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they they went ahead and said, hey, you know, um, so they went ahead and argued, hey, you know, everyone should have a right to have these reviews. It's no Freedom different than any other things out there. Yep. And so the, the it, it was an important reversal because the previous decision effectively censored her her Yelp review, right? Uh, as I just described. Let's move on. Speed round, man. Speed, Speed round. round. So thanks to Brad Reed of Boy Genius Reports for this uh, report here. Uh, iPad growth, Windows 8 confusion projected to make PCs a niche product. So Stern Nagy and analyst and analyst Sean Wu Sha Wu has delivered one of the most pessimistic projections of the PC market yet, as Apple Insiders reports. Uh, Wu sent a note to investors this week projecting PC shipments to grow by a mere 2% in 2013 oh, as growth of both uh, the Apple iPad and OEM confusion over how, the, how to best utilize Windows 8 takes its toll on Microsoft operating system market share. Uh, the feedback uh, we have got, so this is a quote, the feedback we've gotten from supply chain sources is that there is great confusion and there are too many form factors, PC notebooks, tablets, ultrabooks, and convertibles, and most do not know what to build and will actually sell, writes Wu, who also thinks that PCs will, quote, become more of a niche, unquote, going forward rather than a staple of home and business computing. Wu also thinks that Microsoft is more likely to see growth in demand for Windows 7 machines. Uh, from former Windows 8 customer, Windows XP customers who will upgrade to new machines, but who aren't fully con- wow. comfortable with Windows 8, Windows 8's touchscreen capabilities. So I really, really um, am buying a lot of this because I am, I have a lot of people in the enterprise, uh, various companies who are telling me they are converting from Windows XP. Uh, base solutions, which a ton, you'd be surprised, a ton of these enterprise are still sure. going on because it's XP, it's rock solid for those guys, right? And they've Absolutely. been administering it and they finally got it fine-tuned and everything. And now they're they're not even considering Windows 8 at this point. Um, again, I'm talking corporate customers here. Um, and they're only considering Windows 7 at this point also. Um, I think a lot of that also falls in line with the general consumer too, the person who really doesn't care about the operating system and they're just checking email and stuff <clears throat> and they have an old Windows machine on their desk. Um, right. They, I think they're just going to go to Windows 7 because probably a bunch of their friends are on it too or some of their you know, retiree friends are on it or something like mm. that, you know? Well, that, that doesn't spell well for um, uh, Microsoft, does it? Because no. um, they were banking a lot on this Windows 8, right? Yeah, yeah. They want uh, – I think they're aware of this, though. I got a feeling that um, they're sort of aware that Windows 8 is, is sort of uh, going to be skipped over by a lot of people. And it's going to be all about mm. Windows 8.1 or whatever that next thing is. And Right. Well, they, they they said. Remember, I, I don't know if it was one of the podcasts we talked about this, but you know, Microsoft revenues are, 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 you know, from enterprise is going to shrink. So I, I guess you're right. They did they did kind of know about this because, you know, it was projected to be almost like only 10 to 15 percent of their total revenues from enterprise actually, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of you know is totally opposite from 10 years ago, was it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So Greg, man, what's up next? So. Speed round. Speed round, speed round. Thanks to Michael Muchmore, much more, I like that, from PC World for this. Yeah. Uh, so the Nor- Norway-based uh, software house Opera, is, which is best known for its mobile browser, um, also is also mostly an unseen force in the big name TV sets, uh, providing not only web content but general interface code as well, right? And um, and Adolfo is the one that educated me on a lot of this, so I was really excited to see this. Uh, so uh, Opera unveiled new versions of both its Opera TV uh, store and uh, Opera devices, uh, a software development kit, SDK. Mm-hmm. So the TV store offers a selection of HTML5 web-based uh, uh, apps optimized for TV screens, which is uh, kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have this little side-by-side uh, feature that lets viewers uh, view apps on one side and view TV programs on the other. It's really kind of cool, yeah. actually. And um, also, the software development kit supports YouTube's Lean Back uh, personalized uh, nonstop web video channel feature. Yeah, you know, cool. uh, if you guys don't know, uh, 
YouTube Lima. Let me just explain real quick. It's it's a it's a kind of expansion of a, a basic idea that you know you have your own personal TV channel, right? And you just basically um, it'll basically look at what what uh, basic inputs that you've been doing in YouTube and just uh, suggest constant content for it. It's really kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's been out for a couple of years. So, uh, yeah. hey, you know, uh, opera, yeah, I, I, I love talking about in this show that totally. we're talking about, uh, you know, people like Migo, Tizen. I mean, uh, this is great. This is just another one. Yeah, Mozilla, uh, Ubuntu, yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, good on you, opera, good on you. Yeah, man. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. <laughs> What's this PPKIE thing? PPK, I, 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 yeah. So PPK is uh, sort of like known with uh, you know within the web development realm as like the guru of uh, sort of different mobile operating systems and research and things like that. The guy's really bright. I got to uh, sit through some of his talks at uh, Adobe. Really great guy. Um, so, anyways, he just released one of his great uh, polls, right? And one of the results for some of his research. This one is an Internet Explorer poll results. For web devs, you will love this uh, if you are a web dev. Uh, so IE8 is supported by nearly all web developers, IE7 by more than half, IE, but IE6 support is at a paltry 10%. Uh, not long now uh, before it disappears from our radar like IE5.5 has. Um, mm. So web developers still occasionally test in IE7, even in IE6. If the email demands IE6 or IE7 compatibility, web devs generally uh, charge them extra. Uh, he's surprised by the high number of people who can even charge extra for IE7 and the relative low number that charges for IE6 compatibility. Um, so one of the questions he said is about IE 5.5, IE 6, and IE 7. Are you inspired to support in, in your average project IE 5? was 5.5 was at 1%, uh, IE6 is at 10%, IE7 is at 56%, and IE8 is at Makes 92%. Um, wow. So have you ever tested, in even once in the past year, on IE5, it was 2%, uh, IE6, 39%, IE7, 79%, and IE8 hmm. was not available. Uh, we see this sort of the similar pattern, well, actually a different pattern here, and uh, do you charge extra for projects that should work in IE 5.5, there was nothing available. In IE 6, it was 66% uh, do charge extra. And IE 7 is 42%, and then IE 8 was uh, not available. Um, <laughs> so the reason he ran wow. the poll for testing is to find out what kind of old IE information web developers need. It's clear that the market for IE 6 information is collapsing, even though IE 7 mm. is still a growing concern. Uh, that admir admirably lines up with his current test situation where he can test for IE7 but not in IE6 or 5.5. So he's decided not to test in IE6 anymore. Uh, so see. basically people and geeks out there who love this kind of data, there you go. Thank you, PPK, for doing these exhaustive, exhaustive studies and all you web developers who participated in the poll. Uh, yes, I would love IE, anything up to IE9 to just disappear completely, to be honest with you. Very nice, very nice. Hey, this is, this is kind of a fun one, I think. Uh, I like this one. Uh, so, you know Dish Network, right? Yes, so, sir. the new Dish set-top box sends recorded shows to your iPad and other devices. Uh, live TV anywhere, they call That's it. Right. So, thanks to Peter Svensson of uh, Associated Press for this. Uh, so, Dish Network uh, this week uh, reveal, at CES uh, revealed a set-top box called Hopper last year, right? But uh, this year... Um, uh, they're upgrading Hopper so that it follows you wherever you go, uh, you know, cool. almost like your dog, right? Uh, even outside the house. Uh, yeah. So the all-new, all-in-one digital video recorder and set-top box are revealed uh, Monday at a press conference. Uh, uh, is adorned with the same uh, kangaroo logo, and it, it can transfer recorded TV shows on uh, movies on iPad for viewing at any time, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so the first cable and satellite company to, to offer such a feature. Isn't that so cool? Yeah, it sounds like um, a Slingbox, a DVR Slingbox. Cool. Well, there, do you know who owns Slingbox, Sling Media? I do not. Dish Network. Ah. Dish Network. <laughs> do you believe it or not? Ha <laughs> ha, good one. Oh, you're good there, Adolfo, my friend. So, uh, yes, that's that's why it is. Um, Echo Star, the parent company of uh, uh, Dish Network, uh, bought uh, Slingbox uh, or Sling Media oh, very cool. um, uh, about mm, 2007. Oh, nice so, to hear they're leveraging uh, the technology then, you know? Hey. 
you know, why not, right? Um, usually, they, it just dies on the vine like a grape yeah. and it turns into a raisin, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, hey, hey, again, another. I thought that was a really kind of a cool thing that I saw there that actually you could actually stream to other devices, uh, iPads, iPhones, Android phones, computers, mm-hmm. even outside the home. I mean, how cool is that, huh? <laughs> so. Anyway, <laughs> it's that cool. Anyway, let's talk about the tips of the week. Let's talk let's about tip time. Tip time, tip time, yeah. tip time. What do you got, my friend? What do you yeah, got? Yeah, so my pick of the week is called UX Archive. So all of you user experience and designers out there, or anyone that's just interested in the web and, and mobile flowage and how it works, check them out, UX Archive. Uh, they're at uxarchive.com. That's the letter U and the letter X, archive.com. Um, so what they do is they give you different examples of like ways to explore through applications. You know, how are different uh, startups and iOS and applications exploring? How are people getting onboarded onto your applications, your websites or whatever, you know, different sign up type of mm, paradigms and mm. stuff like that? How are people searching and different methods of searching and stuff like that? Uh, how are people sharing and how are people signing up for your service and things like that? And it's really a very uh, beautiful, actually, website and their example are really uh, educational so um, it's it's a great way to sort of like if, if you're going into any type of design or considering researching any of this kind of stuff you know check out check, check out uxarchive.com you know a very good uh, a very good uh, starting point for a, a lot of you out there no oh, very nice very nice and I like Greg, that tip. your That's... tip brother hey let's talk about line it's been the most famous app in uh, <laughs> in Asia right now and uh, you know here in the United States now um, Anyway, uh, you know, people weren't able to communicate with telephone or email services with, from mobile carriers, right? So they wanted as many people to carry on a conversation. So um, they built Line, which is uh, really owned by Naver, which is uh, one of the biggest um, online companies in Korea, right? Hmm. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, half of their users from Japan, and it's a really a cool app. Uh, i like you guys to try it out and check it out. Uh, it, the app gives users free voice calls on iOS and Android over 3G, 4G, and Wi-Fi. Nice. Can you imagine that? Um, and they have these things called, uh, you know, the emoji devices, but it's it's kind of cool. I'll show it right here if you can see it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If my, can you guys see it pretty good? Yeah, it's yeah. pixelating right so, now. Uh, Hold it up there. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, so I'll put up a uh, shot of it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you. So it, it's it, it, it's uh, what I call kind of 3D emoji, right? Instead of the little line line figures with the little you know happy face or mm-hmm. hello, you mm-hmm. know, it's it's actually um, you could actually buy these things and you could create little stories. I found out mm-hmm. um, when I talked to my friends in Japan, they they won't say any words to me. They'll just put like five different. Uh, characters on there, and I have to figure out what what they're trying to say. Oh, it's something worth trying. It, it's if you have WhatsApp, it, it's 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 similar, but I I feel better. So uh, it's definitely a good alternative for a um, a conversational tool, and it's uh, catchy on fire right now in, in, in Asia. Man. So right on, right on. So, so anyway, events, man. What do we got coming up? It's a lot. Well, uh, SF New Tech. Oh, we have a lot coming up. Yeah, let's talk about SF New Tech. Uh, the first SF New Tech show of the year comes uh, January 23rd at uh, Mighty Nightclub in San Francisco, California, 119 Utah Street. Yeah. So uh, the first tech store of the year uh, will have companies like uh, BitCasa, uh, PlayScreen, uh, uh, Evsdrop, uh, Rufferly, and uh, Bugsnag. Nah, I, I don't know who the heck they are, but I'm they sound pretty do cool, don't they? Thank you. <laughs> and I'll be there probably streaming uh, uh, in, in in a new capacity, possibly. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, so, yeah, thanks to Dave Asprey um, for inviting us. We are media coverage. Yeah, again, media partners. We're here to talk about the amazing uh, uh, biohacking conference here in San Francisco. This is uh, January 17th through 19th. And uh, you want to sign up at uh, bulletproofexec.com. You can get more information. That's bulletproofexec.com. Uh, fantastic information. So Dave Asprey is a Silicon Valley investor, a computer security expert, an entrepreneur who spent 15 years and uh, half a million or a quarter of a million dollars uh, to hack his own biology. He upgraded his brain by greater than 20 IQ points, lowered his biological 
age and lost 100 pounds without using calories or exercise. The Financial Times calls him the biohacker who takes self-quantification uh, to the extreme of self-experimentation. Uh, he's written and been published by the New York Times, Fortune magazine. He's, he's presented at Wharton, Kellogg, the University of California, and Singularity University. I mean, this guy, you know, <laughs> is a serious overachiever here with amazing information. Check him out, too. He was on a recently interviewed at the Joe Rogan podcast. Very educational stuff. You want to bring out your notepad for that one. This guy knows his stuff. Very cool. Nice. Super good. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to learn a lot. And uh, I, that means you guys are too, because we're going to be covering this in depth. Um, so check it out. That's uh, right. Bulletproofexec.com. Again, uh, you know, uh, January 17th through 19th. So uh, yeah. Nice. Consider it here nice. in lovely San Francisco. Cool. Cool, cool. And then uh, what do we have next? Uh, oh, Macworld World. Don't forget Macworld. about that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so excited. So stoked for that. Oh, uh, uh, Adolfo and I are invited yeah. as media coverage for that uh, important event. That's gonna, that's a big event yeah. for us. That's the first time we've actually covered I'm that, so right? I'm so pumped. And so, uh, Fred uh, Armistead is going to be speaking there, too, uh, from Saturday Night Live oh. and Portlandia fame, too. I'm a huge fan nice. uh, of all nice. people who are going to be there. So the dates on that, Greg, it's at Moscone uh, in San Francisco. Yeah, January 31st through February 2nd mm -hmm. to the public, and um, they have a pre-show for the media like us Ooh. on January 30th in the evening, so uh, we'll try to give some advanced information out there for that, and yeah, this is going to be so cool. Um, I'm really excited as well, so uh, bring your... Uh, we better bring a lot of water, our portable uh, recording devices, and our camera. Yeah, so, that's right. Anyway. And also, uh, make sure to check out um, some of the other shows on Earth Stalker uh, Network, Media Network here. we got uh, Social Time mm. with uh, Social Greg over here and Social Media Sean, uh, and, uh, who are a lot of fun, amazing show. If you're uh, into social media at all, uh, it's great uh, education for you people out there that uh, want to incorporate this into your business. I think it's a critical part of uh, basically uh, you know, technology as well. Um, you definitely want to check out the show. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. Thanks, man. So anyway, uh, also suggest some stories for us on Uh You know, uh, uh, you could download us through iTunes uh, audio and video and rate us, please. And, uh, of course, we have our YouTube channel, Nerd Soccer TV, and our 24 by 7 channel on uh, Nerd Soccer uh, TV called I, on iBroadcast TV. And uh, I think our podcast is syndicated on Stitcher and right. a couple other places, yeah, right? Yeah, a bunch of places. And also, if you want to participate and suggest stories to us, uh, use the hashtag, hashtag NRDSDK on Twitter, and we will definitely uh, incorporate it in the show. Why not? Hey. All right, man. So, hey, where can they get a hold of you, man? So you can reach me. If you want to email me, it's adolfo at nerdstalker.com or just, you know, ping me on Twitter at nerdstalker. And you, Greg. Hey, you can reach me on uh, Twitter at socialgreg or you can email me at socialgreg at nerdsoccer.com. So, and uh, wherever you find Adolfo, you will find me. <laughs> <laughs> and his keyboards, his lovely keyboards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just surrounded by keyboards. It's like ELO. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah, that's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you brought up the ELO thing. It. Oh my I god, had you had to do it. Yes, yes. All right. I know. Well, thank I know. you for listening, and watching. All right. We really appreciate it. All right. Be careful out there. See ya. Three, two, one. Welcome Whoa. to the Nerd Stalker. Whoa. Are you first? Oh. <laughs> <I'm> first. <laughs> that was awesome. I